We've got $15 million that's been made available to that, uh, to that area. It's, it's called the TIF district, the tax mm -hmm. uh, finance district. And it's going to be made available there. We don't even have an idea of who we're going to put there yet. I mean, we should be out recruiting. Um, and uh, and I, uh, I talked to uh, the Racine County Economic Development uh, Corporation, and at our last uh, council meeting, they said, well, look, we've created 300 new jobs in, uh, in Racine. And my question was, again, how many of those jobs went to people who live in the city of Racine? Yeah, okay. Because if you don't hire one of those, uh, if you don't hire a resident from the city of Racine, you're not doing anything for my district or for my city. Um, I also think that we should be going out to uh, first, I think we should develop a plan, and we can work with people like S.C. Johnson, who have gone a long way in this, and build an eco-plan that takes Racine off the, the energy grid. If we can do that, we can go out to ener alternative energy associations like solar and wind and geothermal and say, you know what, we're on track to take our city off the grid. We've got S.C. Johnson, who's one of the industry leaders in, 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 in clean manufacturing. Mm -hmm. We're the place for you to come and locate your business. And on top of that, we'll work with Gateway and UW Parkside to develop the core curriculums so that we can take our own Racine residents and train them for those jobs and make them job ready for the next stage of advanced manufacturing which is green manufacturing. Mm -hmm. I've heard a lot of talk about green manufacturing in the city. I haven't seen the kind of steps that are necessary to bring those businesses into town. And we can do that. When you have large uh, unemployment like we have in Racine where we were leading the state of Wisconsin at one time, but now we are a step behind below it as far as unemployment. And again, a high unemployment in the central city area. Uh, you you have you have law and order problem. You have gang problem. Do you have any idea of some of the things that you would do as mayor to try to curtail and make our streets and communities safer? Well, I I think that the existing uh, cop house program has been very successful. Um, I go to every cop house meeting um, in the second district. And we have people who are actively engaged in protecting their neighborhoods. You know, I, when I ran for alderman, I went to every single door in the second district three times. Um, and, you know, it didn't matter whether it was people living on Racine Street or people living on Lake. Everybody had the same concerns. They were concerned about public safety. They were concerned about taxes. And they were concerned about the transparency and lack of openness in government. And um, I have found that same thing at the cop houses. People are working together. What we have to do is bring Racine together as a community, like a family that looks out for each other. Now, in terms of specific programs, there are gang diversion programs. But you know what? Gang diversion programs can't start at age 12 or 16. Gang diversion programs have to start at age 6 and 7 because that's where kids are starting to be recruited by the gangs. Mm -hmm. um, then you look at places like the community center, and, and we, are, we are blessed to have a wonderful community center uh, at the Dr. John Bryant Center, uh, run by uh, Lisa Hill Driver. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if you walk into that, uh, that community center, you will find that center full. Basketball, uh, uh, boxing, uh, ceramics programs, a computer lab. We have all kinds of programs going on there. We need to do a little better job, I think, of promoting what we're doing in those community centers. But those community centers are keeping kids off the street. I'll give you a perfect example. 
a young mayor was recently elected in Atlanta and they had closed down all the community centers. And you know what was happening? The pools were all empty and the neighborhood kids were throwing dice in the empty pools. <laughs> it's okay? an SM. And that's, that's what happens when you stop looking after the youth who are going to be taking over this city. Um, and at age 16 and 17, you can have a few successes, but it's pretty darn hard. At age 6 and 7, you start instilling a sense of self-worth. You, you start giving people, a, kids, a sense of achievement. And we've seen that successfully in programs in Milwaukee and in programs in Madison. And we need to really push those programs here in the city of Racine. Now I can scratch off one of the questions I was going to ask you, which was, uh, how is your commitment? What type of commitment do you have to the community centers? Because the community centers in, in Racine, especially the John Bryant and the uh, Martin Luther King, have very historical values to the African American population. And and at one time it was talked that those centers might uh, be closed for financial reasons to try to save money in the budget. Which, would you, as a mayor, would you look at closing community centers to save money? Absolutely not. Um, I do not want to. I, I do not want to see any community centers closed. I want to see us building them up. I want to see us attracting more people. And you know, there is a perception, and I want to. I want to address something that that you raised, Ken. Mm -hmm. That it's mostly African Americans coming to these centers. Mm -hmm. Because I will tell you that at the John Bryant Center, that certainly isn't true. Mm -hmm. um, you find a mix of seniors, of young kids, of, of, of white, of, of Hispanic, of African American, and everybody's playing together. Mm -hmm. And you know, that's how you build a community. When you can break down the walls of fear, because these kids have been playing together since they were six or seven or eight, mm -hmm. um, that's the way things need to be. Yeah, I'd like to kind of close on a on uh, a concern, and I, I think I, I met you while I was downtown. I spent quite a bit of, uh, I think it was about five weeks on the, in the 6th Street so-called entertainment district, and there have been much concern about that area as far as the uh, late night patrons in that area, etc. cetera. Uh, could you give me some kind of idea as a mayor uh, it was a report by the NAACP that kind of alluded that uh, the white population didn't want uh, minorities in that area. How do you how do you feel about that? Could you give me some kind of understanding of what during the period of time that you spent down there? What did you learn? Well, first off, um, I am on the Public Safety and Licensing Committee, um, and when I started learning about these police reports, because that's what we see, mm -hmm. I thought, you know what, a police report really isn't enough for me. I want to go, I want to go downtown on Friday nights and Saturday nights and really walk around and get a sense of what's really going on. Um, and I did that for uh, almost 10 weeks. Um, and I think I got a pretty good feel. I went into bars, I met with owners, I met with bartenders and managers. Um, and, and uh, you know, my sense is that's what's missing uh, in, in those, the, let's say the 500 block of 6th Street, is leadership. What we need to do is instead of just closing down bars, mm -hmm. okay, what we need to do is we need to bring people together. We need to bring the tavern owners, the residents who live upstairs, the merchants who live in those areas and other concerned citizens come together and say, look, let's think out of the box. You know, a police presence isn't enough, okay, mm. or may not even be right. What can we do to make this work for everybody? In, in almost 30 years of business, what I've found is that, that when you get people around the table, you can almost always find what it takes for them to feel like they won when they walked away from the table. And more often than not, you can get most people to be able to walk away from that table thinking that they, that they won, that they got something. Um, right now, we don't have any buy-in. We've got accusations. Um, 
some of which are valid and some of which are completely invalid. Mm -hmm. um, we've got bars closing um, for Friday nights and Saturday nights just because they're afraid the licensing commission is going to close them down. Mm -hmm. um, we need to get the police engaged in this to talk to us about how can we constructively make this uh, a better situation. Mm -hmm. um, I, I don't get the perception that, peop, that, that there are, uh, you know, quote, white people who just want those bars closed. Mm -hmm. uh, there is certainly concern uh, about the number of police man hours that end up being spent there. Mm -hmm. But the question is, do we really have to spend that many police man hours? Mm -hmm. You know, for example, when I've been down there and I've seen just two police walking up and down 6th Street. Okay. Um, I've seen no trouble from anyone at all. Mm -hmm. um, private security, um, as good as it might be, doesn't command the same respect as a uniformed officer. Um, and, and I think that, uh, that, that many of the uh, tavern owners are trying to do what the police tell them to do, what they in their own business minds think needs to be done. Mm -hmm. um, and we're not just talking about a few tavern owners. Mm -hmm. We're talking about the 40 or 50 or 60 families that depend as employees of those businesses. Yeah. Um, and, and what we need to do is we need to bring people together and talk about it. I raised that issue mm -hmm. on the council floor a couple months ago. I said um, when, when, the, uh, when the council decided to close Park 6 for 45 days, mm -hmm. that it wasn't going to do any good. That, that, that if we didn't work on the problem, then the problem wasn't going to go away. Mm -hmm. And again, it's another example of the city of Racine showing lack of leadership and lack of vision um, and lack of an effective strategy um, that, that says we can be a community here and we can work together to make it all work. Yeah. That doesn't mean there aren't going to be snags and things of that sort, but it means it takes an effort, and I'm not seeing that effort. Mm -hmm. you know, I specifically asked for that conference to be held on the council floor, on the record, and, and couldn't get it. Okay, in closing, people want to know in plain, simple terms. Who are you? I'm an honest man who you can trust. Um, I think I, I bring um, business experience. I bring government experience. Um, um, I don't want to be immodest, but I think I'm, I'm, I'm a pretty smart guy. Uh, and I think if we add all that up with a genuine caring for the people of the city of Racine, and a passion to bring the city of Racine back to where it once was, then we can make a real difference in this town. And, and we need to do that now. Thank you. So that's significant.